Hello, welcome pen friends. I am doing a Q&A video today. It's just going to be one question. And the question was, what do you do with your ink samples when they're finished? <laughs> and it's a very good question. And it's a hard one. It's, it's not naturally um, instinctive for me to get rid of anything, especially even when it's down to drops of ink. But I kind of got somewhere last night and I wanted to show you. So um, I've got some that are already cleaned out here and that's good because I need them. And I've got some that are just have already been archived in this notebook, which I'll show you in a minute. And so they're down to an acceptable level where I, yes, I can rinse the vials. I can, I can part with them. And uh, after I archived them, I took off all the labels. So there's no turning back. Those will go in here and these will be washed out soon and they'll join the empty vials. But I have a whole bunch more over here that are just in that category. I went and I sorted a whole bunch out of my art area last night. And that's what I came up with so far. So we're, what we're talking about actually is ink like these um, that have less than a half mil left in it. You know, they have a good couple of drops though and enough to work with as you'll see. But let's backtrack just a little bit and I'll show you. Um, this is the little notebook you've seen before if you've been on my channel. It's um, by Live Notes by Pen Gallery. It's 68 GSM Tomoy River on a five millimeter dot grid. It's not white, it's, it's like a cream. But let's go back to where I started this um, this morning. Let's see. Okay, so last night I did all my sorting and I came up with, let me see, I'm gonna have to fix the camera just a little so we can, you know, see more of what we're working on here, hopefully. Um, so this is what I decided. I decided I would be happy if uh, before I said goodbye to these, even these ones that just have so little bit left, um, and many of them I've already reviewed, I, I still, I would like to see them again in the ink journal, right with the um, glass nib pen, the Moon Man, and make some splatters and feel like I'd enjoyed it down to almost the last drop, you know, very, very close. So this is the Sailor Apricot, which I think was, must have been this one, I don't know. Um, yeah, that was really fun. It showed that ink going from uh, yellow to orange real drastically um, on the ink splatter. Let me hold that up so you can see it real good. It was just amazing. And of course, this is always fun for me. So it kind of makes it easier for me to, to realize that, yeah, it's time. You can't fill a pen with that little bit. You really can't. There's not much I could have done with what was left in here. I wasn't even sure if I would get this much. So then at the bottom, I just put the date, retired um, May 16th. That's the day I'm filming this video anyway, 2020. And then on to the next one. The next one was Robert Oster Honeybee. So I did detect something that was a pattern in the ones that are left over where there was just a little. They were almost all of them from Ink Journal, but there are a few that weren't. But for the most part, these start out as two mil samples. So you know that when they come in, when the sample comes in, I, whoops, I'm gonna make a mess over here on the side. I go ahead and do a cola ring index for it, indicate where it came from or which pen friend sent it. And then I also do the ink tile. So that's how they start, but this is how they're gonna leave because that way it kind of leaves me with at least a final um, kind of an archive of them. So this was fun too. This I remember this honeybee. I remember it being really pretty and it worked better in a, a broader nib. This glass nib pen does write nice and uh, heavy. Uh, it, it's, a, it's pretty much between a medium and a broad nib. So that's nice. That gives me a good indicator of what the inks will look like. And then here's the splatters. There was some pretty amazing shading and, and uh, variation in that too. And that's what you get on Tomoy River paper. We'll do one just so you can kind of see, just so that I can hold myself accountable to, to continue. Okay, next was a Straits Pen Honest Ink Happy Accident Lilac. I distinctly remember that that was part of a 30 Inks 30 Days series where I reviewed them all, but I was having a hard time letting it go. Um, you know, I've got the video I can rewatch and I've got the, the little page in my uh, ink journal, but I really wanted to uh, fill this ink journal up and keep more. See, this used to be when I was doing uh, a little bit, maybe, you know, a lot more thorough reviews. So, and I just really treasure these kind of, uh, well, I call them leftovers, but, you know, evidence so that I could come back in and kind of see what some of these inks did. 
course that was one of my very favorites anyway I'm do doing a little more I wasn't sure if it would bleed through well yeah it shows through a little bit here and there you could see uh, on the page with honeybee this happy accident lilac did show through a little but it's not all that bad really this is good paper so and you can see that the uh, the honeybee did seep through here at the top but I just avoided that area and it's not really that bad I could put a sticker there or something and then over here is Robert Oster Whisper Red, which I remember I didn't really like all that much because it's too light for me, but it really looks nice on this paper and it was fun to splatter around with and it was easy to let go of once I did that. So, um, you know, ended up with, I am not sure. No, that's not it. That's that other one. Anyway, some of them are already cleaned out, so... I don't need to worry about which one it was. <laughs> and then this was Diatramentus Mint Turquoise. That's the last one I did. Let's see. So how many did I do this morning? I did. Okay, so the little bookmark is where I started. Uh, so I did the Diatramentus. Oh, I think I, st I didn't start with that. So I started here on this page. The Diatramentus Dante Alagir. That was a real pretty one, but depending on which nib, I like it darker like this. So when it was first uh, dipped in the glass, with the glass nib, I liked it better. And then the Kyoto tag, that's just gorgeous, but there was hardly any left. Like there was just drops left. So it, it was just time to, <laughs> to put it in memory, basically. So that's two, four, six, eight. So I did eight this morning before I went to take care of the dogs. That's cool. Okay, we were on Whisper Red, and then, so then next one was kind of a dark burned orange kind of color uh, by Tasha, and that was a really nice one too. Again, continuing with that theme, the two mil samples are the ones that <laughs> give me trouble as far as I have a little tiny bit left, and I'm, I, I guess it's like a fear of missing out on that last drop, or wondering, am I going to change my mind and want to see this again? But uh, there's just not enough when you get down that far. There's just not enough. But there is enough to do this. So that's what I'm doing. Let's see. Diatramentus Mint Turquoise. I really like that. Now, said Goulet Pen Company, or I needed to have gone back into my, my spreadsheet has initials on who gave me uh, samples. I know I purchased one, but I also was gifted one. So um, that is just empty now. Retired. Okay. So let's see. Next we have... Okay, this is another one of the Kyoto tag, uh, Kyono Odo, oh, I knew how to say that before. <laughs> I know I've already reviewed this, so there's no sense. We're going to write it out, and you'll be able to see it, and I'll just show you, because this, this has been a lot of fun, and it's nice, because it's finally resulting in empty ink files, and this is what <clears throat> every ink addict needs <laughs> work your way through what you're already using and uh, then it kind of frees up all that energy and all that time for the new ones so I don't mind spending this time doing this because it actually just feels like a better um, better care and management <laughs> of my ink so I wanted to cover up all those scribbles anyway so there we go okay so too quickly did I put the cover on. So sometimes it's a little tricky, but the good thing about this glass nib is it's thirsty. It goes in there and it doesn't mind if you just have a tiny bit. It just wicks it right up onto the nib and really less than half mil and you can still get that nicely covered. I, I'm impressed because I couldn't do that really with my serendipity unless I was dropping uh, with an eyedropper directly onto the feed I don't think I could get this result so I'm really happy with this whoops I made a mess no good okay okay so we've got Kyoto tag now, I know there was a review on this but that's okay <laughs> it's in the larger ink journal Kyoto Odo. Ooh, these are hard to spell too. And A O N I B I. Okay. I've been trying to do a little bit of a smear with them too. <clears throat> and then just the sentence. The quick brown. Boy, that's really pretty. 
fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is a good one. Some of the ones that came before, the ink kind of dried out and kind of landed uh, lighter real quickly, but not with this. Of course, it's still going to dry. That's true. Okay. And then I am going to re-dip just so that I can do it consistently with the rest of them. Just give it a little more on the end. Okay. So I remember what pen I was using. Moon Man Mini Glass Nib. This, by the way, I only have this left. Front and back of one more page. I am feeling very good about filling up notebooks. This has been a theme throughout the pandemic so far, and it feels good to be filling up notebooks. Just, you know, finishing many. I, I've even gone back into old notebooks that were just, you know, started and stopped, and I'm filling them up. And it, it really, really feels good. Okay, so this is another one that's from Ink Journal. And then we're going to get to my favorite part. <laughs> Spraying. You should have seen this morning, though, because Coco was over here. and Oh, my gosh. He wanted to get right in front of me while I was doing the ink syringe. It was really dicey. I had to take it over to the sink because he's white. And can you imagine with that, all that white hair, what would happen if he ran at just the right time, got in front of this thing and got sprayed with some of these inks? Oh, my goodness. So now I'm just going to do um, some ink splashes and see how they come out. And this is a good way for me to use up the last couple of drops of the ink. <clears throat> so I've got some in there and I expelled it. Now I'm just going to get some air and go for it. <laughs> I like it when I can get it to make really strange uh, patterns. But usually it's when it's straight on like that. It's kind of like that. That's kind of a dud, but it doesn't matter. It takes several to get a good one there. That's what I like right there where it kind of looks like a happy little splash in all directions. I just love that. Okay, this one went a long way. I mean, gosh, that's still there after all that. Okay. I think I'm happy. I think I can say goodbye now. <laughs> uh, at first I thought, this is not going to work. I'm just going to fall in love with the inks all over again. And I'm still going to save the half drop that's left. But I can't do that because I've got so many new ones that need my attention. And my energy seems to be kind of blocked by how I know I should be handling it. You know, getting them cleaned up and, and getting better organized. <clears throat> so I thought I'd share it with you. It may or may not help you. I don't know. You know, I, I may be somebody who thinks very differently. I'm just getting that cleaned out because we'll use it again on the next page. Okay, so I'm going to follow through with what I was doing before and just put the date at the bottom. <clears throat> and that's a little harder because that's about all that's left. There's barely a huh, little teeny bit left in the bottom. <clears throat> that's good. That's what I wanted. So, Okay, so we're going to put retired... May <clears throat> 16th, 2020. Okay, a little, maybe a little heart. That was a nice ink. It's, it's kind of a blue-black. It's just very pleasing. Yeah, I like it a lot. And that will show me a lot about what it does. It, even with the splatters, it shows a lot of the variation of the color. So I love that. I love seeing that. I'm really glad that it's not bleeding through so badly that it's going to destroy, you know, the page um, behind it. Now, some inks would. If we counter a Noodler's that's really a rugged ink, it probably would. So, let's see if we can do one more. Oh, okay. The next step that I'm doing, I'm taking off all the stickers because this is like point of no return here. Let's not try to hoard these any longer. They're gone. And uh, so I'm just going to put the lid back on and take the stickers off because then I don't know what it was and I can go to the sink and I can clean these out. You would be surprised how hard that is for me to do, even though it's gone for all practical purposes. It is gone. Okay, next. All right. 
I think I saw one right here that I wanted to do. Um, Monteverde Kindness Pink. There's less than a half mil left. And it's very, very tiny bit. And I've really explored this one a lot. So I know I'm good. I just want to basically archive it. So start all over here. And then I've got written down somewhere what the next, the next question for this series will be. Because the next question is really good. It came in through an email. So I'll give you that before we leave. But let's do this one. It's just fun to do. This is Monteverde Kindness Pink. And the initials on here are KS, so it was from a pen friend. And I, I believe it was a two mil sample. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it did come from Goulet Pens. Oh, I splashed all over that other page, but that's okay. It's not too bad. It's just you can see it looks like it rained over here. So that may interfere just slightly, but we won't worry about that. Okay, ready to get our glass nib pen. Make sure that's nice and, yeah, that's clean. Okay, so again, it isn't too bad because immediately it whisks right up onto the glass. I just love that. Th this, for the money, this is a really good pen. It was under $20, and it has that uh, screw to post and to cover over the nib, so it's fantastic. I just love it. <clears throat> okay. I'm thinking that it must be getting close to a year with it now, but I'm not sure. Okay, so we're talking about Monteverde. This is one that I found very beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Kindness Pink. Okay, let's do an early on kind of a smear there. Oh, isn't that pretty? Let me hold it up because it's not looking, it's looking maybe too red on, by the camera, but you see how, where it's smeared? That's what the, the true color is underneath, but then of course there's quite a bit that needs to dry on the rest of it. So we're gonna have lighting issues. That's always the way it is, but. All right, and then quick. Now I'm working around a tripod. I'm really gonna be tricky here. <laughs> Brown box. Jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, I think I'll redip. I want to see each time I redip right at that same point, that just gives me apples to apples to look at and see, you know, how the different inks looked, treating it the same way with the pen. Moon Man Mini. Glass nib. Whoops. Oh, I did forget to do my little figure eights. And I usually do some hashtags, too. Okay, let's do a nice bar of color there. Nice. And again, okay, but this is not from Ink Journal. This is from, I'll put the initials first. Pen Friend KS, and we'll put Goulet Pens. And I'm pretty sure it started as a two mil sample. That's what I think. Could have been more though, because someone sent it. Whoops, I forgot to put that over here. That was two mil for sure, because that's from Ink Journal. Okay. Let me go ahead and... Okay, time to use the ink syringe. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> no, it's ready. I don't remember doing it, but it seems clean. Let me, I've got some more clean water. Let me do that one more time just to make sure. I don't remember doing it, but yeah, it must be I did because the syringe is clean. Okay. Little bit of mad scientist going on here. So I want to make sure I don't mix blue with the pink and then end up, <clears throat> I think I've got enough of the blue in the back, black bleh, background there. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to draw it up and then take it out gently and spray. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> I bet it's looking bright on the camera. Okay, now I wanna try just straight down. Oh, <laughs> you get what you get, I guess. I'm always trying for those silly little things like, you know, that kind of go out in all directions. Ah, just the air alone from the syringe help create some kind of pattern. Let's see. 
Okay. Might have gone overboard there. <laughs> it is forever memorialized. Right before retirement. Okay. There we go. And we're almost done. How much time? Have, oh, 20 minutes. Oh, I was visioning it much shorter. Okay, so let's get this line down and then I'll tell you what the next one will be. <clears throat> Not sure when, but soon probably will be the next Q&A answer. Question and answer. <laughs> Only one question at a time is all I can handle at this point. So, retired. I only have one more for this book, but I'll do that later after I've gotten these to dry a little because they really do need to dry on Tamoy River paper. May 16th, 2020. Okay. And it's funny because some of these, I, I'd have to go back to my older ink journals that were done on the Rhodia Gold Books. I've got two of them on the Rhodia Gold Books. And then I switched over sometime last year onto the uh, Tamoy River white paper 68 GSM. So this will be nice because before I actually rinse these, I'm getting to see them for sure on the Tamoy River 68 GSM when many of them were reviewed back when they were uh, on a whole different paper. And not, not every single one was reviewed, but that's a, a long going process for me to see um, which ones I, <clears throat> I still want to review and that kind of thing. Okay. Okay, so the question for the next one on this, um, I, I'd hesitate to call it a series because that only, you know, makes it seem like there's going to be a regular posting and it'll be somewhat regular. But uh, so the next one I'm going to do video um, question where I answer it is, how do you go about choosing what pen and ink to use and for how long? That's an excellent question, especially since my answer may be a little different than some others. So I'm working on that. Two. In fact, I had to take one and it just, uh, it, uh, it didn't turn out. <laughs> so there'll be a take two soon. And I hope you enjoyed seeing this. I, I think it's neat because I'm actually making some progress. So my final step is to peel this off so I can trust myself that I won't try to put this back into the, <laughs> into the almost completely used up ink vial area because it's just, it's gone, that's all. And I have had my time with these, so. I peel off this label. Sometimes they can be stubborn and sometimes they come right off, so. All right, and there it goes into the clean bucket. We're getting there. We got just almost as many to clean out as we have here, so. All right, I'll see you next time. You take care and I hope you're all healthy, happy, and prosperous. Bye for now.